everyone, I am Jaja Lynx, and welcome back to Going Snake. This week we are going to be doing a little bit of expanding. We're not going to really be working in Going Snake proper, we're going to be working here today. And to get this episode kicked off, I want to do something a little bit different so I wanted to start this episode by kind of giving a little bit of a lay of the land. Um, over the last couple episodes, and probably for the next couple episodes, our building for this map has kind of been across a sprawling area, and I felt like it might make a little bit more sense as far as helping you to visualize what I'm doing as well as also just understanding why I'm doing what I'm doing and where I'm doing it if I just took a second to kind of give a little bit of a tour of the whole map and how I'm kind of envisioning things working together. So that's what I wanted to do real quick. So here's our entire map got our river running through it. Here's our power plant that we built in the first episode. And here is Going Snake. Um, so yeah, there's the old power plant. And then this is our main highway, obviously going through it. Here's the intersection that I built on the first episode. Here's our little suburbs. And here's Going Snake. So last episode, what I was working on and what I'm going to be continuing to work on for this episode is going to be our industrial um, system, I guess. So we've got this cargo terminal here. This area around here, I'm kind of saving to be a warehouse area. And in order for those warehouses to have anything in them, we need some industry. And that's what I'm going to be doing this episode. Now, I don't want to do my industry right in this area. I don't want it to be taking up. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to make the most sense for my industrial areas, which I'm thinking farming and forestry. I want that to be sort of on the edge of my city. It doesn't obviously doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have it right in the middle. So I'm thinking maybe one day Going Snake will have a little bit of industry around it, um, more towards the outskirts though. So I'm not ready to start building any industry here. And what I'm instead planning on doing is, so this is our train track that we built on the previous episode. Here's that little hill that I like. I think that it's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, instead what I'm planning on doing is we're going to build a second smaller town, sort of a farming town out this way. And I've already started kind of doing a little bit of the road work. I'll show you that in just a second. But, um, so we've got this little, like, I don't know if this is a river in real life, but we've got this little natural flat windy bit here that kind of leads out this way. And I feel like this is a big enough area to kind of work with. Um, so I'm gonna build some farming and some forestry industry out here. I'm gonna connect it up with the train track somehow. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's how we're gonna start to link our industry in with Going Snake. So I just wanted you to be able to kind of visualize that um, and then I did go ahead and build an intersection, which is going to be leading to this road, which is going to be kind of the main road leading from the highway into this new little farming town. And I opted to just do this off camera and show it now because I've already had two episodes that started with me building an intersection. And I don't know, I think this came out really cool, but I also don't think that anyone is that interested in 
starting every other episode out with an intersection build. So I thought I'd save you the trouble and just show it here. Um, and then we're gonna start the time lapse with um, building out this road that's going to lead into our little farming town. So yeah, that's really it. Uh, let's go ahead and start the time lapse. So yeah, the very first thing that I'm gonna start working on here is just getting the road that's gonna lead to this little industrial area. And what this episode ends up being is just kind of getting the base in for this industrial area. What I wanted to do with it in, I keep saying industrial area, but that's, I, I don't know what else to call it. I really don't think that that's exactly the right terminology for what this is gonna be. It's it's a rural farming area is what it is, um, farming and forestry. So, I mean, yes, it's industry, but it's not necessarily what you think of when you hear industrial. Uh, anyway, what this episode ends up being is just kind of getting the baseline for that. Um, I didn't want to have it only be farms and stuff out here because that's not really real I feel like that's not how it is when you have a farm you have a, you know homes around it usually uh, you have you know just little rural homes usually there's or a lot of times there's like a little city center uh, kind of off the highway or something like that or town center I guess is more the right word but um so what i'm doing today is just kind of putting together that baseline for what is going to be our farming area so i'm i'm basically going to be building sort of a little main street for a really 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 small town we're talking like one stoplight town um there's a grocery store and a <laughs> a warehouse <laughs> tiny town very small handful of houses um your real like southern rural farming town that's what this is going to be and that's what this episode is going to kind of be focused on building so what i'm doing right now is i'm working on this little intersection here that is um going to be the intersection that is between so the this main four lane road here is the road that leads from the highway to the town um, and then that other road that connects to it that splits I'm going to make that eventually go to going snake um, so right now it doesn't lead to anything but that's the eventual plan and I'm thinking that this is pretty probably gonna be a fairly heavily used intersection um probably a lot of the traffic that's coming from going snake to these farms is gonna be going this way i don't know if i'm gonna have anything else connecting the two aside from the highway obviously um so i wanted to build something that hopefully will be able to withstand a decent amount of traffic probably nothing too outrageous um I don't really expect traffic in general to be a huge issue with this build, this map, um, this series, because I don't, it's not that kind of city. I don't care really what the population gets to. I mean, I want there to be enough population for there to be some traffic and for there to be things to look at, because I really like seeing everything, you know, work together and, um, see how everything functions and how the traffic flows and stuff like that. So I want to have some people here, but not. I don't think it's going to be to the point where traffic's ever going to really become a huge issue. But I guess time will tell. We shall see. But yeah, I think this intersection came out pretty cool. Um, I, found, I found a couple of cool little tricks that were kind of new to me that I think worked really well, like um, continuing the median across that intersection there on the right, um, using the ploppable grass and some curb props 
and um, because all of the left hand turns are gonna be coming from here. So that one to the right there is for right turns only. As you can see by the right turn only arrow. Um, so yeah, that's why I did that. And I think that'll be really cool when um, people start actually using it. So I'm looking forward to seeing how all that pans out. And then I just did like a little median here covered in bushes and grass and trees and stuff that I think looks really nice. I downloaded these bushes that I put around the edge as part of another asset that I downloaded that these were required and I'm glad they were required because they're super nice and I've been using them a good bit since I've had them. So you're going to see plenty more of those. And then I was just trying to disguise these tunnels a little bit um, for the train track that goes under the road here. This one, I kind of like the way it's laid right up against the road like that, but that transition from tunnel to uh, mountain is pretty awkward. So I, I did a little bit of dressing that up. I ended up just doing a retaining wall and I think that helped a lot. It's still a little bit awkward, but I think it's good enough. This isn't going to be an area that I'm expecting to have too terribly much camera time. So I really just want it to look okay from a distance. That's where I think you're mostly going to be seeing it. And from a distance, I think it's fine. So um, I thought it was a neat little method I used here to hide it though. So I figured I'd leave it in here. I don't know how often you'll see it after this, but here we go. More of those bushes. Those bushes are fantastic. I don't even remember who the creator is for them or what the asset was that I downloaded those for, but I've got them now and that's pretty neat. And um, I'll go ahead and take this opportunity to, as usual, Remind people that this is an ongoing series, so if you're just stumbling upon this episode, this is one of many, and if you want to join in on the party, definitely feel free to su subscribe. I would love to have you on the Jaja -Ja train, and um, yeah, let me know what you think of this build. I know we're still kind of early in it. Um, if you have any ideas for things you want to see me build in Going Snake at any point. And also if you have any ideas for just names or something of any of the areas that I build, like uh, this town that I'm going to be building here in a bit, I'm not picturing it as being part of Going Snake. I'm picturing it more just as some little rural community that's connected to it. Uh, so I, it's its own place. So if anyone has any name suggestions for it, definitely put those in the comments because as of this recording it does not have a name and um that's something i want to start doing is getting all of my different areas names nothing has names right now except like downtown going snake i'm just gonna call going snake obviously that makes sense so this was a cool little technique that i found um as part of the advanced road tools mod i think that's what it's called um so with that mod you can take the avenues with trees and you can change the tree and you can change the distance between the trees so what i did instead of just having it filled with trees all the way down the line i changed it to densely packed grass clusters so it basically just looks like shrubs or something and I think that that works super well. It looks so much better than just grass and it looks a lot better than those perfectly uniform trees with nothing around them also. So I like that technique and uh, it's probably something you're gonna be seeing a lot of. It works really well. All right, and this is whatever this town is called. Um, or where it's going to be. So what I'm kind of picturing here, and you're gonna to start to see it develop a little bit as I start putting together my road layouts, is 
so this center street is going to be main street or whatever um this is going to be our commercial core of this little town core used pretty loosely there as again there's not going to be much there but this is going to be kind of like the main street for this tiny town um and that's mostly what i'm going to be working on and then the streets branching off from this area are going to be some residential and then as you get a little bit further away and also probably some of this boulevard leading up to the city and probably going past it town not city is also going to have some farms on it so really once we start getting outside of this little main street and outside of the uh, little bits of homes that i put in i'm really going to start trying to just pack in farms and maybe a little bit of forestry somewhere pretty much wherever i can um and in that way we're finally gonna hopefully be able to get that industrial demand bar down um and yeah that's that's gonna happen next episode i haven't started doing it yet as of recording this but i think we're finally there i know i've been leading up to working on industry for a couple episodes now and I really thought that this was going to be the one, but as I started doing it, I just, I realized that, well, it really was just that I had a ton of fun building this little town and I loved the way it turned out. And I ended up just spending a lot more time on it than I initially had planned and just detailing it more than I had planned. It really turned into more than I was expecting it to. So. That's why it ended up getting a whole episode and just sort of the groundwork to to get to even building this town, like building that intersection um, that I didn't show on camera. Well, that I didn't show the build for um, that I showed during the live play and then building that other smaller intersection on the street leading up to it. All that stuff ended up taking me a while and I felt like I had made a lot of progress by the time I finished this. So I was just like, you know what? This is an episode and farms are gonna be the next episode. <laughs> and we got hit by, I have, I think I'm probably one of the only people who plays like detail focused city skylines who actually uses the natural disasters mod <laughs> and um or not mod dlc and we got hit by a thunderstorm as i uh as i was doing this build so that's why everything's rainy and gloomy looking here i actually like the way it looks uh i kind of want to get hit by more thunderstorms the tornadoes and stuff i could take or leave but thunderstorms are kind of fun kind of a nice look And uh, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought there a little bit. One thing that I liked a lot with this town was the way that the, one, the weeds, and two, the decals all kind of worked together to, I wanted it to be really old and run down and just, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the word is, but I just wanted it to be just this dingy old tiny town. Um, it's probably seen better days. Maybe it was thriving at one point in the past. And I don't know, maybe a lot of the people who used to live here moved to Going Snake or something. And now it's just kind of falling apart. And the only people still here are the farmers, but they're out busy farming all day. You know, they've got work to do. They're not really running these shops or anything. And so a lot of them are kind of run down and, and decrepit and not all of them are, but a lot of them are. And I, I wanted to just kind of have this area reflect that. So, and just the fact that it's old. So there's a lot of, you know, cracked concrete and damage to the roads and stuff like that. And, and weeds peeking out of the cracks. And I think that it gives it a really nice effect um, that I'm pretty excited about. I I almost want to make it bigger, um, 
but if we get too big, it kind of defeats the purpose of what I was going for. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out how I want to play that exactly. I may add like another building or two, but for the most part, this is more or less it um, as far as what's going to be here um, for the commercial part anyway. I still build some homes. I do build a post office, so that's fun. Um, but yeah, this is really about as big as this little area gets, and um, there's going to be a little bit of residential that I add here in a bit. And there's some more of those weeds. Um, like I mentioned, I just, I really like the way that those interplay with with the look I was going for, and, and also the ruining that gets put down when you put down trees. Um, I think that looks great too, so. Yeah, I tried to just put a bunch of weeds and stuff around all the different fences, all the cracks that I placed. And then this little building here, actually, this is a... Uh, I think it's just a... I guess maybe it's a forestry building? I was thinking it was industry, but that's not where I was right there. Um, this building is one of the more active buildings over here. It's a... Since it's industrial, there's a lot of trucks that come in and out. And um, it, it does a nice job of starting to bring a little bit of life over here. Because it is going to be a relatively lowly populated area, at least for right now. Maybe that'll change in the next episode. So there, there's not a ton of traffic that, that you'll end up seeing. Um, so that, what I'm doing right here is... And I've mentioned this before, I want everything to be functional. I want this city to work, so that means I need city services and all of that kind of stuff. So that uh, building to the right right there that I'm building this parking lot attached to, that's a police station. And it's actually the same asset that I used for the police station in Going Snake. Probably didn't need to tell you that. <laughs> see if anyone actually noticed um but it's a really great looking asset and the only other police stations i have are i've got the vanilla ones and then i've got one other i downloaded that's kind of a similar style but i don't like it nearly as much so that's what i ended up using and then i actually put a little modular fire block fire station block inside that warehouse to the right um, so that's our fire station over here I figured since it had a big garage, we could pretend like there's a fire truck in there. I do have the no fires mod on though, so I don't know. I don't even know if we're ever gonna see fire trucks driving around, which I kind of Park Life kind of ruined the fire system in this game. I feel like because I think that's where they introduced forest fires. I don't mind buildings catching on fire, but I don't want them to get destroyed, is the thing. And I also don't like the way that the forest fires happen, especially in parks, where you have the entire park burns down and all of your trees are just black and dead and look awful. I wish there was a way to make it so you just have the occasional house fire, but the house doesn't actually burn down. I'll have to play around with that and see if I can figure something out that works a little bit better than just turning off the fires completely. Because I do want there to be fire trucks driving around and I don't even care if there's buildings on fire every now and then. I just don't want them to burn down since everything's plopped and I don't want to have to re-plop things and if it's an area that's detailed that could screw things up real good. Um, I don't know, if anyone has any solutions to that, let me know. Otherwise, I might have to make that a little project for, I don't know, eventually. See if I can get a setup I'm a little happier with. Um, so yeah, now we're expanding out just a little bit to some residential. I didn't go too crazy with the detail over here. It was really just like throwing trees in making sure cars were parked in areas that made sense. I gave this house a little carport with a driveway. I don't know. That was kind of cool. I found this. That asset's actually a uh, shopping cart cover, and I used it in another building 
on Main Street. And um, I don't know, I think it's a cool little asset and it makes sense as a carport. So I threw that there. Um, I gave these guys a little patio, um, just some little things here and there to try to give this area a bit of extra detail, but I didn't go too crazy. And then I um, gave some of the houses some little shrubs and worked on their um, sidewalk to make sure that it expanded all, all the way to the road. So that kind of stuff. And of course, leaves because it's fall and we have leaves. <laughs> I love those leaf assets kind of beating a dead horse at, at this point, but I am extremely fond of them. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. Again, definitely uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Here is our before and after, way zoomed out because we covered a lot of ground for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Here are our cinematics and have a lovely day.